Joining me from Westminster also is Labour MP Graham Stringer. So we can talk through some of these uh, issues. First of all, first of all, uh, Graham Stringer, on that issue of cutting fuel duty, um, Labour supports this move. How likely is it, do you think, that the, that the Chancellor will go ahead with it? Well, if I'm to believe what are obviously leaks in the weekend's press, he is highly likely uh, to go ahead with it. And I think it's the right thing to do because the government, in effect, are getting a windfall uh, from the extra uh, cost of fuel to the distributors. That means they're collecting more VAT. They didn't plan to do that. So giving some of the money back uh, makes sense when people are going to be hit with mm. national insurance um, increases, domestic fuel increases, a general very high level of inflation compared to what we've been used to. Giving some money back uh, makes uh, sense and it will give a little bit of relief to people who simply can't afford uh, the, the level of inflation we're going to get over the next few months. I suppose there is an argument here as to whether something should be done in the generality or the targeted, because of course, what happened over uh, gas bills, heating bills uh, earlier in the year was the announcement that instead of cutting VAT, the Chancellor was giving targeted support to the bottom 80% of households by income. Um, is, is that not potentially a better way to go ahead with uh, dealing with those rising petrol prices? Uh, were the Chancellor to go for targeted support rather than support that affects even the very richest? There are pros and cons, uh, both ways. The problem with targeted support is it helps people. It usually costs a lot in administration, and you drive people into uh, a poverty trap. Mm. The better way of dealing with it usually is to not have unnecessary increases and, well, basically to stop piling extra renewable costs onto domestic fuel bills. So, yes... Targeted uh, support can help in the short term, but in the medium and long term, it often make, makes it more difficult for people to improve their own situation. Mm. It's interesting, of course. Uh, you mentioned there uh, the, uh, some of the levies that are applied to energy bills. Um, you were going to speak at a rally alongside Nigel Farage and Richard Tice to address some of these issues. Uh, do you believe in that campaign for a referendum on net zero? I have argued for a long time uh, against the extra cost being placed on people uh, to achieve uh, a net zero. I don't think they're delivering either what they claim to be delivering in changing uh, the amount of carbon dioxide in uh, the world's atmosphere. I think they're terribly regressive taxes and I'm going to continue arguing for that. I, I told the organisers of the rally when they asked me to speak at that rally that I actually have my doubts about whether a referendum is the right way forward. Mm -hmm. I supported the referendum on, the Euro on our membership of the European Union because we'd had a referendum to, to cement us into the European Union. So the only constitutional fair way out of uh, the EU was to consult all the population again and to have a referendum. What we're talking about with net zero, really, is much more mainstream uh, non-constitutional policy. It's about taxation, it's about energy policy, and I think is better dealt with in manifestos at general elections rather than a referendum. But the core issue, should people have extra costs uh, loaded onto them, which it's not only the costs don't get rid of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, they help the Chinese and Russian economies they help because we're transferring our industry to those uh, countries. That makes those countries more powerful, us weaker. And we, we know that Russia is, uh, is, has caused a, a war in Ukraine now. And I am very apprehensive that China won't do the same thing in Taiwan. So we don't want to be strengthening their economy.